Hello and welcome to Recyclist. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and I am being joined by an incredibly special guest this morning. Uh, please help me welcome to the show right now, Dr. Ian Hunter, the General Manager of Renewables from Camlin Group. How are you doing today, sir? Hi, Eric. I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Um, thanks very much for inviting me on. I'm very glad to, glad to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for those who might not be aware of Camlin Group and, and what you guys do, could you please uh, enlighten the people? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so Camlin Energy is part of the Camlin Group. Uh, we are headquartered in Northern Ireland and we have offices all around the world to support our customers locally. Um, within Camlin Energy, our, our focus is very much on the optimization of, of critical energy infrastructures in both the electricity and the gas sector and um, within gas and um, in particular around, uh, around biogas. Um, one of our main products within that is our, our Biospec VOC um, system, um, which is uh, we launched around seven years ago, um, and it's uh, focusing on really optimizing biogas upgrading upgrading projects, which I guess we'll get into um, in a little bit more detail on this. <laughs> yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to talking about the Biospec, a very, very interesting piece of uh, technology. Really quickly, I, I will break the ice with something. Uh, last time we spoke, I got to see into your uh, office. Uh, I saw a couple American football helmets uh, sit in the background of your office, although I don't know if they're from teams that many people in North America would be familiar with. Uh, no, no. So um, I uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the amateur teams here in, in Northern Ireland, the Belfast Knights. So I, I played with the Belfast Knights for a for a few years until my career was was cut short with a with a shoulder injury. When now my shoulder is bolted back together again, toyed with the idea of going back to it, and then decided I probably I probably shouldn't at my age. <laughs> <laughs> what position did you play? I uh, played tight end. Very nice, very nice. But yeah, I absolutely wanted to talk about uh, the the biospec VOC analyzer. Like I said, really, really interesting piece of uh, technology. What can you well, what can you tell the people about that, just in kind of uh, broad terms? Yeah, sure. Um, so really, biospec VOC it's a it's a system focusing on measuring contaminants in 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 biogas. Uh, we started, we brought it to market around around seven years ago. Uh, very much many, the, the market dynamics around biogas were, were changing a lot, moving from energy crops, which is very clean biogas, into mm -hmm. more use of waste for, for generating biogas, whether that's um, um, organic waste from, from towns and cities, whether that's waste in, in, from landfill sites. Um, and we're getting a lot more um, contaminants um, and uh, components in the in those gases that previously with energy crops weren't really an issue, and with this move to to waste as a as a feedstock ha has become an, an, an issue, and obviously the. The move to waste is really, really important um, for, for, for the whole climate change. Um, waste decaying, creating methane, releasing that into the atmosphere. Methane is, you know, is far worse for the atmosphere than, than the equivalent amount of, of CO2. So, so capturing, yeah. that, capturing that waste and using it actually as something of value, turning it into biogas. So you're saving that methane going into the atmosphere. And then you're using that biogas as a fuel instead of instead of a instead of a fossil fuel. So you've got win-win. So the market's certainly right to be moving into that space. But then as as VOCs were starting to be seen in the gas, starting to cause some problems, I realize there's a there's a real issue there, a challenge there that needs to be needs to be addressed. And like many things, you know, understanding what is happening in your plant is is key to the optimization and efficiency of it. Um, so Biosmac VOC is, is an online analyzer that sits in the heart of the upgrading plant. Um, and you know, there'll, there'll be a, there'll be systems um, equipment, typically activated carbon in the in the in the plant to remove remove these VOCs, H2S, solar sulfides, xylenes, whatever. Um, and our analyzer then sits in the middle of that, monitors the efficiency of that, looks at what's coming into those those filtering equipments, what's coming out. And yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a fixed analyzer, correct? Correct. Yeah, fixed fixed analyzer measuring multiple sample points, sort of before and after the the filtration systems. Yeah, and you specifically call it an online analyzer. Uh, what I'm I'm sure people kind of have a good idea of what that could mean, but what specifically does it mean by calling it an online analyzer? 
Really, it's uh, real time. You're getting the information real time. You're, you're, you're doing a measurement and a minute later, you, you have the results. You know what's happening in your plant in, in, in real time. And then as you start to see then trends develop, um, you can take action immediately. You know, the, the other way of, of measuring VOCs is to take a sample of gas in a, in a Tedler bag, send it off to a lab, wait a week, get some results. Um, and if some of those VOCs, which can be very harmful to your up, upgrade equipment can leak, leak through the damage is already done before you have your before you have your answer um, so here we we see it in real time um, and then action can be taken in real time and why why would you tell people it's so important to to have something to have a device like this to measure vocs for people who are looking to uh, to to start taking their methane and start taking their their landfill gas or agricultural gas and turning it into biomethane renewable natural gas. Why is this aspect of the process so important? Um, it does depend somewhat on your upgrading uh, technology and um, depend on how how effective you are by by VOCs, but also the um, the the gas that you might be injecting onto the gas grid has to be clean of of, of VOCs. So let's mm-hmm. let's take take those two take those two parts. Um, so think firstly the, the the gas being injected onto the gas grid. Some of the VOCs like um, lemonine, pinene, very strong smelling things. If they're injected onto the gas grid with the gas, they will actually mask the odorant that is added to natural gas or biogas to um, for, for safety reasons. Um, so you don't want those strong smelling components on the gas. That will make your gas non-compliant with the gas grid, cause a, cause a, cause a safety issue. So you, you certainly want to protect the gas grid from, from that stuff, from, the, from, those, from those contaminants. Yeah. Stepping stepping back then into the into the heart of the plant, um, different technologies um, are affected by VOCs in, in, in different ways. One of the most common um, technologies for doing upgrading of gas now is using separation membranes to move the CO two from the from the CH four. Excellent yes. technology, really straightforward to to run. It so sort of seems to be now sort of the one of the leading technologies in the market. Um, and you do need to protect those membranes, however, from from VOCs. So there'll always be some filtering stage in before the membranes to uh, to protect them typically activated carbon and what our system and activated carbon can absorb a, a, a certain amount um, of VOCs and then it starts to saturate uh, and, and some of the VOCs leak through so with our online monitoring system monitoring for a range of different VOCs we, we see that that saturation event of the carbon starting to see some VOCs leak through and the, the plant is alerted to that they take some action which is typically change the activated carbon and then the, the, the VOCs then are, are, are captured by the new carbon. And crucially, that is keeping your gas within the specification of the membranes. Some of the VOCs can be quite um, damaging to the membranes. Um, others will just simply clog them up, reduce the throughput, um, or reduce the efficiency of the CO2 removal. So your product gas, you'll have maybe less of it um, and won't be as good as, as good quality. So that's, that's really about that protection of your upgrading equipment is the, is the primary driver. And that then is, is is hitting your you know your plant uptime and your plant efficiency uh, metrics. The other piece that is is quite useful then is understanding what VOCs are going into your filtering system, into your activated carbon. With that knowledge, then you can better liaise with your carbon supplier to um, spec out the right mix of carbon uh, for the for the type of VOCs that you and the ratio of different VOCs that you have in your biogas. So, uh, so in kind of layman's terms for, you know, somebody who's not a doctor like myself, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so essentially what this does is it allows you to be confident in the, the level and the purity of the gas that you're piping into the pipeline while also having a much better understanding of the saturation of the membrane or the activated carbon that you're using so that you're not either, um, you know, piping in uh you know impure gas through oversaturated carbon that needs to be replaced and you haven't known yet or replacing the activated carbon or membrane before it's necessary and basically wasting money either way yeah exactly ex- exactly that just really keeping your keeping your gas within the specification both of your upgrading equipment and and for the grid uh and i do want to ask about uh, i think one of the big signature aspects of um, uh, of the biospec is this idea of optical absorption spectroscopy. And aside from being incredibly difficult to say, uh, what specifically is 
that? Why is that such an important aspect of the the biospec BOC analyzer? Good question. Uh, one question I, I I love love talking about the technology in this in this in this product. <laughs> um, so we when we were first presented with the problem, um, we were very much what is the right technology for the field application. So we weren't trying to take something you know from a scientific lab and think how do we adapt this to the field. Start with the problem. What is the easiest? What is going to be the most robust technology to to solve this? To solve this problem, we're we're trying to measure components at you know parts per million, sub parts per million uh, levels. Quite a lot of different um, VOCs. So um, optical absorption spectroscopy. You're looking what that is basically different molecules will preferentially absorb different wavelengths of light. It's that interaction between light and matter. Um, but different, in simple terms, different molecules will preferentially absorb different um, wavelengths of light. And what we're doing in the Biospec VOC uh, device is uh, basically bring a sample of gas into an analyzer, shine light through it, and then look at that absorption spectra. And each one has its own absorption signature. And then our algorithms can, can deconvolve that and, and report out this, this is acetone, this is hydrogen sulfide, this is laminine, wh whatever it is, at this specific um, concentration. The really neat thing about this technology and why we chose this this technology is that it's it's in very simple and robust to operate. All we're doing is bringing a sample of gas in, shining light through it. So the the aggressive components are not actually in contact with any sensitive sensor parts. There's just a window at either end of our gas cell. We shine light through it. So it's not like hydrogen sulfide, some acetone, some aggressive components. They're not, they're not touching any of our sensor equipment. We also don't need any carrier gas to run it. And so we just flush the system with ambient air before and after each measurement, uh, let the gas in, do the measurement and, 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 and flush it out again. So it's really, really robust and all components, including hydrogen sulfide um, are, are measured optically. So how do you calibrate something like that? So in in our each component is calibrated in our in our factory. Um, every system is calibrated um, individually, um, and uh, so we have uh, I think it's sixteen different gases we measure. Um, so we have um, calib certified calibration standards. We we bring each gas in individually into the system and and get a calibration sort of standard for for that for that particular gas in our in our in our unit and do that consecutively for all all of the different components. And then what the algorithms are doing then is, is, is effectively basically working out the best fit for what it's measuring based on those 16 different different components. The really neat thing about this technology um, is that we, in the field, we use a, a differential approach. Um, so we actually pump our gas cell down to a vacuum, do a measurement. That gives us our, our reference of, a, of an empty cell. We let the gas in, do another measurement, and, and the, the difference is how much light's been absorbed with that mixture. That approach means our system doesn't need to be recalibrated. Um, any any small drift in or in there or change in the light source intensity calibrated out. Um, any change in the sensor that's that's automatically compensated out again by that by that differential approach. So every system you uh, calibrated individually in the factory, but it doesn't need to be recalibrated in the field. And I just want to re repeat that doesn't need to be recalibrated ever in the field after it's installed. Correct. Correct. We have had this, this system on the market for seven years now. Haven't recalibrated one yet. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. And I actually know you're about to go check on a couple yourself uh, in the next week or so. Correct. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm over in the U.S. next week to to, to install some. So, um, what were what would be the the full spectrum of of applications for for something like this? Who should be interested in looking at the biospec? Um, any any biogas plant um, that's upgrading the gas. So, so VOCs are really only an issue for your upgrading part. If you're if you're burning the gas in an engine, and um, the VOCs will be combusted unless they're siloxanes, and um, the VOCs will be combusted safely in the engine and, and won't, won't be an issue. So siloxanes and hydrogen sulfide would be your concerns for for um for engines, but the other VOCs not. So this is very much a product focused on the RNG uh, sector. Uh, so if you have like a uh, if you have like an agricultural project with some with some maybe organic waste, even animal bedding, you can get some um, VOCs in that. Um, landfill gas, particularly, um, a lot of VOCs in that. Um, using municipal we uh, municipal organic waste, town, city food, um, as, as your as your feedstock. There, you're going to have lots of VOCs, and especially if you're using membrane technology. Yeah. 
you want to you want to protect that membrane th uh, technology from the VOC. So th those would be our our main customers. And we're we're working both with um, all, I think we're working with almost all of the all of the OEM com um, companies supplying the upgrading equipment. They're they're putting our they're specking our equipment in. Um, our equipment's pretty much become the standard way of measuring VOCs now, um, and they're putting them into new projects. And then we're also retrofitting our system into directly with end users um, into into the into existing existing projects. Beautiful. Well, it sounds like you guys are already kind of establishing a foothold within uh, this idea of, you know, volatile organic compounds. And I, I was just interested, what what was it about this aspect of it that you really saw an opportunity over at Camlin Energy? It was really very much the the move to waste in the in the biogas industry. That move from energy crops, which had been heavily incentivized, that was changing. The incentives were moving to to waste, and um, combined with the move to to membranes being the being the sort of main technology to do the upgrading. Those those two things to get happening at the same time, um, really then with the with the VOCs then starting to appear can be can be problematic if they're not dealt with that created the opportunity for um or really created the market need for a, for an online monitoring system to provide the plant with the data they need to to manage the problem awesome and where can people learn more about the biospec and learn more about camlin energy if they're interested in uh in uh, implementing one themselves I guess for come to our come to our website, um, CalmanEnergy.com, um, um, but also if you're looking at a new project, um, more than likely whatever um, uh, upgrading equipment manufacturer you're you're working with and talking to is probably already in partnership with Calman Energy with this equipment. Maybe already have even recommended it for for your project. Um, and if you have an existing project, just 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 reach out to us. Beautiful. All right. Well, sir, I want to, uh, Dr. Hundar, I want to thank you so much for, for joining us today on Recyclist. Like I said, the biospec is really, really, uh, a really, really interesting piece of uh, technology that I think a lot of people, especially, uh, you know, in the renewable natural gas sector should be taking uh, a look at. But uh, uh, you can find links to, to Camlin's website uh, in the description below. But uh, once again, Dr. Hunter, thank you so much for joining us today on Recyclist. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a, been a pleasure to, to discuss this. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day, sir. And we'll talk soon. You too. Thanks. And I'd certainly also like to thank the sponsor of Recyclist, Diamond Scientific. Make sure to reach out to them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Recyclist. We'll see you next time. Thank you.